From here on out, I'm treating you like you're invisible since you're not helping out. Just like that, my husband declared and started giving me the cold shoulder. My morning greetings got no response. My goodbyes as he left for the day were met with silence. He couldn't even muster a thank you before dinner, just quietly wolfed down his food. He acted as if I was a ghost in our home, and his mom, who we lived with, was just as bad. Despite sharing the same space at home, they acted like I was invisible. My words fell on deaf ears. While my mother-in-law and husband enjoyed chit-chat over dinner, I found myself eating solo, standing in the kitchen. Their laughter ringing out from the living room felt like they were taunting me. I felt so down it brought me to tears. One day, after a year of living like a ghost, my husband broke the silence. Remember what I said a year ago? If you have any issues, feel free to leave. But I guess you, being a homemaker, wouldn't have any options if you did. He laughed, cockily. I've been waiting for this moment, for the whole year. My name is Anna. I'm a 34-year-old stay-at-home wife. I met my husband Jackson about three years back, introduced by a friend. I've been all in on my work ever since I graduated from college. Although there were guys I found appealing, I never got into a serious relationship. I just kept shuttling between work and home for years. I left my job, so I didn't mind the routine, but a friend, feeling sorry for me, introduced me to Jackson, thinking we might hit it off. Once I met Jackson, a hotshot from a top-tier college working at a high-profile company, I felt our worlds were miles apart, me being just your average office worker. My friend mentioned he was quite the catch and had a string of women after him. But for some reason, he seemed to take a shine to me and asked me out after a few meetups. I was warming up to him too, so I said yes to dating. Before long, marriage talk was in the air, and within a year of dating, both our families had met. Jackson doesn't have a dad. I was told he left after a divorce when he was a kid. That's why he seemed to adore his mom so much, and was pretty insistent on living together after we got married. Honestly, the idea of living with his mom was a little tough to swallow. She didn't seem nasty, but sharing space with someone who was essentially a stranger takes some getting used to. Plus, her place was a bit of a hike from where I worked. My commute was stretched to over two hours. I planned to keep working after getting married, but living together meant I'd have no choice but to quit. Sensing my hesitation, Jackson promised me time and again that he'd do everything to make me happy. I decided to trust him. Finally, I made the call to move in with his mom. After we made it official, I quit my job and moved into his mom's place. She greeted me with a warm smile, and Jackson couldn't thank me enough for agreeing to live together. Maybe we could make it work. I felt incredibly hopeful back then. After quitting my job, I threw myself into housework and mingling with the neighbors. Picking up home cooking tips from my mother-in-law and gossiping about supermarket bargains with the neighbors was a fun change of pace. One day, Jackson came home looking wiped out. It was rare to see the typically cheerful Jackson like this, so I was a bit concerned. Welcome home, honey. You okay? Tough day at work? He responded, Yeah, it was, and let out a heavy sigh. Then looking me in the eye, he said, Anna, I need a favor. I feel lousy and embarrassed even asking, but... He had this serious look on his face. Hey, we're our team. Spill the beans. I'll do whatever I can to help. My response brought a faint smile to his face. Well, I need help with work. I'm heading a new project and drowning in paperwork. I just need you to sort out some stuff I've collected online. Can you handle that? Well, that's a bit anticlimactic. With that intense expression, I was expecting something much more serious. That's it? Of course I'll help. I've been adapting to this lifestyle and was actually contemplating trying something new. So from that day, I started pitching in with random tasks like organizing paperwork whenever I had spare time. It felt great to lend a hand to my dear husband. The idea of easing his load didn't bother me at all, but after two months of living like this, I started feeling worn out. 
Juggling his work and house chores was beginning to weigh me down. Initially, it was just some basic internet research, but gradually I was roped into crafting presentation materials. Now I was handling all the presentation documents. It was just too much. It went beyond what I initially agreed to. There was barely any time left for house chores. That's when I decided to tell Jackson I needed to bow out of helping with his work. Hey, Jackson, can I take a break from helping with your work? It's tough managing house chores and prepping presentation materials simultaneously. If it's absolutely necessary, I can stick to light research like before. As we snuggled in bed, ready to call it a night, I turned to Jackson lying beside me. Suddenly, he sat bolt upright. Startled, I sat up too. He looked at me, his face hardening within seconds. Don't spring that on me now. I've been relying on your help to drive this project, but I guess a homemaker like you wouldn't get it. He shot back with a touch of sarcasm. I was stunned. I couldn't believe that the always kind and upbeat Jackson could say such a thing. As I sat speechless, he let out a heavy sigh and continued. All right, from here on out, I'll treat you like you're invisible. If you have any issues, feel free to leave. I gasped at his words. What are you saying? How can you think like that? I managed to snap back, but he ignored me and dove back under the covers. Despite my attempts to rouse him, he'd already drifted off to sleep. After that, Jackson began treating me like I didn't exist, just as he'd promised. He overlooked my morning greetings, my goodbyes when he left for work, and even when I served dinner. He acted like I was a ghost in this house. And his mom was no different. Despite sharing the same place, she behaved as if she was blind to my presence. It was painfully awkward. She wouldn't respond even when I tried to start a conversation. Gradually, Jackson began having meals just with his mom. While the two of them enjoyed dinner together, I ate alone in the kitchen standing up. Their laughter from the living room felt like a cruel joke and it was so sad that I felt like crying. But maybe some of this was on me. If I had been better at juggling house chores and assisting Jackson, this wouldn't have happened. Maybe he's just fuming now and will cool down with time. With those thoughts, I didn't muster up the courage to put my foot down and all I could do was endure. Those hard days rolled on and before I knew it, nearly a year had passed. As was the norm, Jackson and my mother-in-law carried on ignoring me. Ever since he cut off my allowance, I've been scraping by on savings for my single days. It had me questioning why I even got married. As I was hauling in laundry for the three of us, I heaved another sigh. Guess it was time for lunch. With that thought, I went down the stairs from the second floor balcony to the living room on the first floor. That's when I goofed. I missed a step and took a tumble down the stairs. A resounding thud echoed throughout the house. Ouch! I rubbed my sore backside where I'd taken quite a hit. As far as I could tell, no fractures or serious injuries, but I was bracing for a massive bruise on my butt. As I sat there, I heard hurried footsteps from the living room. Anna, what happened? Are you okay? Did you fall down the stairs? Are you hurt? My mother-in-law rushed over, helping me up. Overwhelmed by the fact that I was conversing with her for the first time in almost a year, I blurted out. I haven't heard your voice in such a long time. At this, she froze, her mouth hanging open. Uh-oh. I'd let something odd slip. Quick on my feet, I covered it up with a cheerful tone. Ah, um, I'm not hurt. I'm all good. Sorry to worry you. But it's really nice to talk to you after such a long time. Just kidding. Hoping to lighten the mood, I threw in a playful quip. For some reason, she looked like she was about to burst into tears. Then she asked, I thought you hated me. I was perplexed. Why would I hate you? Why would you think that? Is that why you've been giving me the cold shoulder all this while? As she nodded, she started unveiling a shocking truth. The tale traced back around a year. Roughly, when Jackson began ignoring me, he had somehow convinced his mother, saying, 
Ayana hates you. It's best you don't talk to her. It appeared he didn't take kindly to my not obeying his every word. Maybe he was trying to discipline me or control me by isolating me at home. I never dreamed that Jackson, ever so kind and adored by everyone, could do such a horrific thing. And his mom, also kind-hearted, never imagined her son could lie and wholeheartedly believed that I despised her. I really like you. I like the mom who shared her cooking secrets with me, the mom who welcomed me with open arms. When I said this, she covered her mouth and nodded several times. It seemed like she believed me. I'm sorry, Anna. I should have verified it with you first. When Jackson gets back from work today, let's confront him about this. Cheerfully, my mother-in-law apologized and promised to have a conversation with her son. After that, we spent a lot of time catching up. It was the most enjoyable time I've had in recent memory. Then, Jackson came back from work. He looked taken aback for a moment seeing me and his mom chatting away, but soon shrugged it off and fetched a beer from the fridge as if nothing was amiss. Jackson, sit down. You know what we need to talk about, don't you? She said this calmly. Beer in hand, he wordlessly took a seat at the table. Jackson, stop tormenting Anna. Apologize to her right here, right now. When his mother said this, he snorted. What? I didn't bully her. Got any evidence? Show me the proof. He scoffed, looking incredibly self-assured. Indeed, there was no hard evidence. It's not like I had footage of being sidelined or recordings of him fibbing to his mom. Both his mom and I were at a loss for words when he continued. Anna, do you really despise me that much? Didn't I suggest the same thing a year ago? If there's an issue, leave. But I guess you, being a homemaker, wouldn't have many options if you did. He was right. I wouldn't be able to fend for myself if I left, since I have no income. Even though my parents are still around, my sister and her husband are living with them, so there's no space for me there. But I've had it. I can't be with you any longer. Okay, I'll go. Wait, Anna, wait! I brushed off my mother-in-law's pleas to halt and began packing. I stuffed only the clothes and toiletries I'd need immediately into my overnight bag. Thanks for everything up to now. Do whatever you want. You'll be crawling back soon anyway. Amid his abusive jeers, I left my in-law's house. Fast forward a week, I was lodging at a hotel near the terminal station. I was swamped with various tasks I needed to sort out for my future. Just when things were starting to settle, my phone rang with an alarmingly fierce call from Jackson. I ignored it for a bit, but ultimately picked up around the tenth call. Hey Jackson, how's life? Don't play dumb. It was all you. He yelled so loudly that I feared my eardrums would rupture. It was so loud that I had to distance my smartphone from my ears slightly. What are you on about? The letter. The blasted letter. You wrote that I'm a bully and a shirker and mailed it to the company. What on earth were you thinking? Oh, really? I had no idea, but that sounds tough. I lied. Just as he had said, I had mailed the postcard. After leaving my in-law's house, I had written a letter to Jackson's workplace. Jackson shoves his work onto others. Jackson abuses his wife. Jackson is a liar. And I embellished more things in glaring red letters. Don't screw with me. Thanks to you, I'm on suspension. Me, a rising star? What the heck? I'm under house arrest until they can substantiate the claims. I just delegated work to an inept underling. I merely gave a worthless wife a purpose in life. The genial and kind-hearted Jackson was long gone. He was likely shouting with a demonic expression while yanking his hair out. If you claim so, you must have proof, right? Go on, show me the evidence. The evidence that I mailed the letter. I retorted with the exact words he had thrown at me just days ago. His fury peaked and he started shrieking. Unintelligibly. There was no reasoning with him anymore. So I just ended the call saying, well, I'll hang up then. 
The following day, I swung by my in-law's house to discuss the future with Jackson. We hadn't scheduled anything, but since it was Sunday, he should be home. I let myself in using a spare key. I didn't see my mother-in-law's shoes. She might be out shopping. In place of her shoes at the entrance, there were unfamiliar high heels. As I was pondering if it could be, I heard noises coming from the master bedroom. I had an ominous feeling, so I dumped my bags in the hallway and started filming with my phone as I approached the bedroom. Amid the clattering noise, I could hear the voices of a man and a woman. I braced myself and thrust open the bedroom door. There was Jackson in the nude, and an unknown woman sprawled on the bed. The woman spotted me and let out a startled squeal. Then Jackson also gasped. Whoa, Anna? Oddly enough, I felt incredibly composed, so I decided to just quietly keep the camera rolling. The woman, in a state of panic, quickly gathered the scattered clothes on the bed to cover herself. Jackson, is she the wife? You're joking, right? You said you divorced her six months ago. You said you were going to marry me. So not only was this guy tormenting me, he was cheating too. He must have thought I was the perfect little housemaid. No, it's not like that. It's not what it seems. He was muttering incoherently. And then the woman decided to just get dressed and scram, declaring that they should break up. Silence engulfed the room. When I addressed Jackson, his shoulders twitched. Then he sprang out of bed and started begging for my forgiveness. What a laughable sight. I'll do anything. Just please don't share that video. He seemed truly terrified. He must have been shocked by how well my letter of strategy worked. So you'll acknowledge your wrongdoings and agree to divorce me? After all, I have evidence now. When I proposed this, he responded with a barely audible, Yes. Sometime later, Jackson and I officially got divorced. Of course, I saw alimony, which he agreed to pay in one go. He was demoted after his superiors discovered he was shirking his work onto his colleagues. Moreover, his reputation at work plummeted due to rumors about him mistreating his wife and our divorce. Jackson, always a stickler for appearances, couldn't bear it and ended up quitting his job. Now he seems to be living a hermit's life in his mother's house. His mom decided to continue living with him to make amends for the hassle he caused his wife, keeping tabs on his lifestyle and attempting to reshape his behavior. I do feel a tad sorry for his mother, who's blameless in this whole fiasco, but I think I'll kindly accept her gesture. As for me, I managed to go back to the company where I used to work. Apparently, there was an unexpected resignation. And by sheer coincidence, it was in the department I used to be a part of. While it feels like I've circled back to the starting point, I've resolved to face life head on without harboring any resentment. That's the vow I've made.